Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Jay and this is the 2017 Kia Sportage. I wanted to do an unboxing review of this particular vehicle because I'm often being asked what is or what are rather the best crossovers on the market today. So I came down to Kia Marin in the San Francisco Bay Area because I specifically wanted to show you the all new Sportage which was redesigned for 2017. So this car is the fourth generation Sportage. It first came out back in 1993, but if you recall, or if you were even born at that time, Kias were not really the best looking cars on the market. They were very plain and they, they just didn't stand out. But that all changed uh, a few years ago when Kia hired a former Volkswagen designer named Peter Schreier. He came in and just completely redid the brand the way it looks, the way they feel, and I think it's all for the better. And in fact, you're seeing other automakers today, even in many ways copying what Kia has done with their exterior styling. Now, the Sportage started to really look good back in 2010 when the third generation came out, and the difference between the second and third generation was massive. Now, this fourth generation car picks up right where its predecessor left off in just about every category. And specifically, there, there, there's a few areas I want to point out to you, like all crossovers today, especially the compact ones, they do come available with all-wheel drive. Front-wheel drive is, is, uh, is standard, and all-wheel drive is just becoming very popular because in many areas of the country, people need all-wheel drive in the winter months. Now, if you live in the south or anywhere else where it's warm, front-wheel drive will probably do you just fine, but if you live up north and you get those winter blizzards, all-wheel drive is really, really good to have. And looking at this car's exterior, an interesting fact is that the design was inspired by fighter jets, and you can you, you can really kind of see how that, that that came to play here. It that the rear end is just I think it looks fantastic, but it's the front end that I know not everyone uh, has liked immediately. It, it does take a, a, a very much a styling chance, but overall the proportions are really really nice. This particular car is equipped with the 19-inch uh, uh, wheels. There are 17-inch wheel standards. You, you can also get 18-inch wheels as an option, but this is a top-of-the-line package here. This is the SX all-wheel drive. And the exterior color, they call it black cherry, and if you see it in the light here, you do see kind of like a very dark reddish uh, color slightly, but you know, I happen to really, really like it. And under the hood here, this is the optional engine. It is a 2.0 liter turbo four-cylinder gasoline engine with direct injection. It has a total of 237 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. Now, the horsepower is down a little bit in compared to the front-wheel drive version of this car, and that version, the front-wheel drive, has 240 horsepower and the same torque rating. And power is sent to all four wheels via a six-speed automatic transmission, and that is the only transmission available in the Sportage today. The base engine that you can get in a Sportage is a 2.4 liter inline four with 181 horsepower and 175 pound feet of torque. So for most people, I think the 2.4 liter, it is a naturally aspirated engine, will do just fine. The, the turbo 2.0, it's definitely nice to have the extra power, but I wouldn't say it's a requirement. But Kia has done something really smart and they've made all wheel drive available no matter what trim level you buy. So you don't have to spend all the extra money to get the top of the line car in order just to have all wheel drive. You can get the base model and add all wheel drive. I think it's about a $1,500 option. And stepping inside this interior, I've, you know, I've just complimented Kia many times, specifically with the Kia Soul. You should check out that unboxing review as well. Their interiors are just absolutely fantastic. The build quality 
is right up there with the likes of Toyota. The materials are uh, very nice, nicely chosen. I didn't see any really hard touch plastics. Everything was very soft. And again, this is one of the areas where Kia has just really shined in the past few years in terms of overall improvement. I really like this, uh, you know, this two-tone leather. It, it just, it looks really good. And if you didn't see these Kia badges inside and out, you might even think that this could be an Audi. I, I'm absolutely serious about that. And I think the German automakers, such as Audi and BMW, have very much taken notice of what the South Korean uh, automakers, Kia and its sister brand Hyundai, are doing. Because look at this interior. This is, again, this is the top of the line and it has all of the extra features. And just from this angle, it just looks so premium. And, and I've used that word to describe the Kia Soul's interior as well because that's really what it is. It's premium, it, it feels good, it, it's comfortable. And again, if you compare it to Kia's just 10 years ago, it's just worlds, worlds better. It's not even recognizable to those older uh, Kia models here. So I'm going to start up the engine and see how a turbo uh, four-cylinder sounds. I'll get back to you in just a minute here. Okay, so it's a turbo four. It's again, this is not a high, high performance crossover by any means. Zero to 60 miles per hour is gonna happen in 6.9 seconds, but that's fine considering this vehicle weighs almost 3,800 pounds. But just looking at these interior details here, you got uh, heated and ventilated front seats, uh, Harman Kardon premium audio system, an 8-inch nav uh, infotainment screen. And even the steering wheel is heated and covered in leather. It's just a really, really well put together vehicle inside and out. And as I mentioned again on the Kia Soul, this is uh, literally the exact same infotainment system. I really liked it. I played with a lot of infotainment systems. Is it the best one on the market? No, not quite. But, and I have to mention this, because I like this infotainment and nav system better than the one on a Mercedes E-Class that I recently did a, a unboxing video of as well. And I think, again, German automakers are taking note, not just in the, in the design, but in their technology categories as well. I think German automakers, they make uh, the infotainment systems unnecessarily complicated sometimes, such as BMW. But Kia has made it very simple. It's not hard to figure out. I like the color contrast. It's not all black and white. Um, even in direct sunlight, I was still always able to uh, find the right button on the touch screen without any issues. But a standard uh, Kia Sportage, it comes with a five inch touch screen uh, with a, with a six speaker audio, Bluetooth, steering wheel mounted audio controls with hands free calling, cruise control, remote keyless entry, a six way adjustable driver's seat. So even a, a regular Sportage comes with a lot of value packed in, and that is something Kia has become known for. And all the buttons, overall, maybe some of them were a little small. I thought they were very well placed. I didn't have any sort of confusion finding or figuring them out. It, it was very much common sense. And you also have different driving modes here. And that's uh, something that's very good to have. You have normal, eco, and sport. Again, you're going to adjust it by the type of road condition that you have. That's not at all unusual to find on any new car today. Pair of cup holders as well. Again, all of this you should be finding standard on any new car.
Now, as I was saying before, crossovers, they're actually starting to outsell sedans in the US by a significant margin. So this is, as you can expect, a very, very competitive segment for Kia. And they have to be on their A-game in order to sell a lot of these. And the Sportage, it falls in the Kia lineup right in between the Soul and the larger Sorento. All three of them are crossovers, but I imagine Sorento, or excuse me, Sportage buyers are going to be those former Soul buyers who they're starting to have families, they need more space, and they really like their Soul, but they again they need more space. They want uh, their their budgets maybe a little bit more. They want some more premium features, and the Sportage is a very smart choice for them. As you can see, the front end here has these nice LED daytime running lamps and fog lamps. I know the front end is a little weird, but it grew on me really fast, actually. But I think this rear end styling is just fantastic. I mean, if I were to pull up behind this car in traffic, again, except for that Kia badge, I would think this was an Audi Q5, for an example, without question. It really does look that good, especially in person. But I also want to talk to you about cargo space because that's also something very important within, within this segment. The uh, Sportage comes with 31 cubic feet uh, of cargo space, which is actually 5 cubic feet more than its uh, predecessor. And what's interesting is that the rear seats, again, they fold down 60-40 split, but once they're folded down flat, that cargo space nearly doubles. There is a lot of room here, there's a lot of flexibility. If you, uh, if you do require extra space, it's available for you. Ah, and there it is again, a panoramic sunroof, just like it is on the Kia Soul. I absolutely love this feature. I want to make a note out again, an $85,000 Toyota Land Cruiser does not even have this feature. It just has a regular sunroof. Also really nice here, you have 10-way uh, powered uh, driver's seat with lumbar support. The front passenger seat is 8-way front uh, or 8-way control, which is, you know, again, premium, premium features packed into uh, a very solid price, which I will get to very shortly here. So I've spoken a lot about how much I like this 2017 Kia Sportage. Are there any negatives? Yes, and it comes right down to the fuel economy. So this is officially rated at 21 miles per gallon city, 23 miles per gallon highway, and a 21 mile per gallon average, which if you compare it to other all wheel drive crossovers in the same size segment, it's not very good. For an example, the Ford Escape has 23 miles per gallon, the Honda CRV 27 miles per gallon, and the Subaru Forester, 28 miles per gallon. Those are all uh, average combined. They also all have all-wheel drive. It, uh, with the exception of the Forester, all-wheel drive is optional. It is standard on the Forester as well. So bear that in mind. The Kia, again, it's not perfect. I found it very comfortable, spacious. I loved its premium features, such as that panoramic sunroof. The only downside is the fuel economy, which within this segment, there are some other vehicles that have higher numbers, not by much, but some. So if fuel economy is your main concern, take note of that, but I don't think in any way it should be a make or break deal. So a base Kia Sportage, there are three uh, trim levels, the LX, EX, and SX Turbo. The LX starts at just under $23,000. The EX starts at $25,500, and the SX Turbo starts at $32,500. Again, $1,500 is what it will cost to add all-wheel drive to any of those models. And this car came to a grand total, including destination cost, of $35,545. And that is actually still a little cheaper than a comparatively equipped Ford Escape Titanium with all-wheel drive, as well as a Honda CRV Touring with all-wheel drive and a top-of-the-line Subaru Forester 2.0 XT Touring. Bear all that in mind, fantastic value once again coming from Kia.
And for the record, an Audi Q5 has a base price of $41,000. So again, tremendous value. But again, everybody, I'm out of time for today. Thanks so much for watching. Any more questions, please leave them for me in the comments section. I promise to answer all of them. If you have any more suggestions for future cars for me to review, also leave those suggestions in the comments below. And be sure to read the full review of the 2017 Kia Sportage SX all-wheel drive on carbuzz.com. Till then, see you next time.